So it's good to see everybody tonight. I'm glad you guys are on to add value to yourself. You know, it's a it's a it's been a busy week for me, and I'm sure it's a busy week for you. And I'm hoping that everybody is really thinking about a, a takeaway from last Sunday sermon. I got real. Uh, I got a lot of positive uh, feedback, even us up as close to today about last Sunday sermon. Um, I was talking to one of the members. Um, and they were saying how it is so imperative to watch out for drifting and uh, how you can drift and spiritually deteriorate um, without even knowing it. And I think um, um, when you think about the whole Christian walk, okay, Christian walk and your focus with faith. Dylan, Dylan, now we can't do Jesus' name in bubbles, okay? Now you're going to have to go downstairs in just a second. So you guys, you're going to sit here. And, I'm going to write it downstairs. Okay, all right. Okay. So anyway, so uh, well, let's get going for tonight. Brother Walker, would you lead, lead us in prayer and then we'll get going? Dear Lord, we want to thank you once again for being so good to us and we've been to ourselves, Lord. We want to thank you for waking us up this morning. I want to thank you for just letting everyone uh, just able to be on uh, this Zoom call this evening for a Bible study, Lord. And thank you for our seniors. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our pastor leading us and guiding us and teaching us the spiritual word, giving us the spiritual word. Lord, I just pray for the ones that are out there lost this, this evening or the ones that just don't have nowhere to lay their head down and no clothes on their back and no food on their table, Lord. Give them what they need, Lord. Watch us and guide us the rest of this week. And thank you for the Bible study this evening where we can be taught. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, um, Brother Walker. Again, we're back to, as we celebrate the one another month, we're so grateful again to have so many of you uh, on, adding value to yourself. Um, I'm, I am convinced that the older I get, the only thing that keeps me focused and keeps me on track is when I get in the word of God. And when we think about adding um value to one another and the word of God, um, you, you have to think about how when you read scripture and, and scripture tells us what we should do, um, we only add value to our spiritual lives, not just by knowing it, but by doing it. And when I really think about the one another month, and I was sharing with uh, Sister Burroughs and Ryan them about the fourth Sunday, it'll be just one another Sunday and we'll have a small picnic after church. I said, um, the, the goal of this month is to help us all to understand uh, how important it is for the body of Christ. I left you all a message today and I was saying, I appreciate the, 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 the Christian faith. I appreciate Emmanuel and where would my life and my family's life be uh, without faithful people who love God and love us. Um, and, you know, I was thinking about that. And then all of a sudden I got a text from one of the members who received the message and said, Pastor, um, my thoughts is, where would our life also be without you guys adding value to us? That's what the one another look like. The one, an the one another looks like horizontally building up one another, but vertically connecting with God to pour into our own personal and spiritual lives. And the older I get, I see the value and the importance of why we should connect with God vertically first and then connect with one another horizontally. Um, if we don't connect with God vertically first, we, we, we run the risk of being like everybody else like everybody else, because what we give people is our own knowledge, our own uh, philosophical ideas. Um, we give them what we picked up through the world, we, what we picked up through other people, what we picked up through social media. Um, but, but if we do that, we're no different from the world. 
what we had, what we have this genuine, and I'm glad we have a lot of young people on tonight. What we have genuinely to offer people is our Christian faith. Now, what makes us different from the world is because we believe the Bible. We, we, and we believe that the Bible is the foundation for our lives. So tonight, as I talk about the one another, last week I did a little bit about encouraging one another. I talked about um, stimulating and motivating one another to good work. In Sunday's sermon, um, everybody just talked about how it really, really helped them. And I'm looking forward to this Sunday to talk about how do we really stimulate one another. Sunday, I talked about drawing near. Uh, I talked about not drifting. I talked about not spiritually de deteriorating. Tonight, I want to start with this verse about uh, the one another's. And it says, Ryan will put it up. And this is a biggie. Be devoted to one another in love. Uh, Romans 12 and 10. <clears throat> there it is. It says, be devoted to one another in love. Be devoted to one another in love. <clears throat> and when you think about that, what does being devoted look like? This is really a, um, um, a term that is you, a term of endearment. When we look at families, we look at husband and wives, we always talk about sometimes uh, when you read a person's obituary and they were faithful, they'll say, he was a devoted husband. She was a devoted wife. But here, Paul tells us that we should be, de be devoted to one another in love. Now, now bring me in. When you look at this illustration, right? Let me illustrate it real quick. Here's what that devotion looks like. Uh, there's a quote that says, the love of God demonstrated by Jesus on the cross is our foundation for how to treat others. We are to be devoted, committed to other Christians. Now, when you think about that, now I can come in. Um, when you look at Christ on the cross of Calvary and how he stayed there, he stayed there because of love, because of love. Um, um, that word devoted looks like Jesus who the picture that we have, the metaphor, when he could have came down, he took it. He took it. Now watch this. Love, and you've heard me say this, but jot this down. Real love is not how much you can give but it's really what you can take. And that's what, that being devoted to one another in love, how much can we really take off of, first of all, remember I said it's a term of endearment with your families. How much can you really take off your family? How much can, how, how much can you really take off of your spouse? How much can you really take? Because here's, here's, here's the thing, when you're talking about being devoted to one another in love, we take so much off of people we don't even know. Now think about this in the Christian body. We take so much off of people we don't know, we don't have no real relationship with. What Paul is saying, because we're Christians and we got a vertical relationship with Christ, horizontally with one another, he says, look, we ought to be able to take some stuff off our brothers and sisters when we're devoted to them in love. And so Jesus, even though he was not guilty, he was able to take some things. Here's another one in the B clause of that verse when we talk about the one and others. And I think you ought to ask yourself a question. How devoted am I? Write this down. How devoted I, am I to God, then to the ones I serve with? And how about your own family? How devoted am I to God? the people I serve with in my own family. Because, because being a part of a church, you have a real relationship and not a casual relationship. At least you should anyway. A lot of our relationships are casual 
And if you don't watch it sometimes, we're more devoted to casual relationships than we are, I see a lot of people shaking their heads, than we are to the body of Christ. Let me, let me say it another way. If it's a term of endearment and love, we could be more devoted, devoted to our friends and other people than we are to our own family members. And so Paul says, when we talk about the one another's and think about the body of Christ, he says, be devoted to one another in love. Then he says in the B clause of this verse, honor one another. Watch this. Now, here's a biggie. And this is hard. Honor one another above yourselves. And that's good. Some of y'all are taking pictures. That's great to, to keep the outline. He says, honor one another above yourself. Now, here's how we do that. And I know some of y'all are saying, well, what does honor look like? Honoring someone is treating them with your deeds and your words as worthy of your service. They may not be worthy of it. Note this, the people may not be worthy of it, but you still treat them that way. But you should do it anyway. Some honoring means treating people better, listen to this, than they deserve. Because people don't always deserve your best treatment. But guess what the Bible says we ought to do to the body of Christ? You still should honor them. Now, let me say this because, I mean, you think about it. We live in a world that is so quick to cut, to cut people off. If we don't cut them off, we may curse them out. If we don't curse them out, guess what we may do? We may put them in a corner in our mind and we don't come back to them. And as we celebrate and think about the church's 103rd anniversary, and, I, and we think about the body of Christ, you have to ask yourself, uh, how well am I doing with treating people right? Offering service to people. I was with a guy, and I know he's a multimillionaire yesterday, and he said something um, that is just so... It was profound because he wants to do some work with me. And he's been trying to do this work with me since 3036. And he's a Caucasian guy. And I told him, listen, I, I was just frank with him. I said, first of all, when y'all came at me, I said, I didn't appreciate the, the other guy. He's a, he's a billionaire. This guy, I knew was a multimillionaire. I said, I didn't really appreciate how y'all came off at me. I said, first of all, because I said, God has always been faithful to me. I said, all I do is do the work and God does the rest. But he said something at the end that, that I, he said, Pastor Webster, just let us serve you. Just let us work with you. We see what you're doing and we just want to come alongside and work with you. And I pause to say that because um, when we talk about devoting and honoring one another, that was an honorable word anytime you talk about serving somebody. You know, most of the time, most of the time, we'll work with you, but we don't want to serve you. And I said, well, did you read what's in the sanctuary of the church? And this is what he said. Yeah, I read it. You have on your wall, saved to serve. And when we talk about being devoted to one another, listen to me closely, honoring one another, what does that look like? You know what it looks like? It looks like serving one another. Now bring me in, because I want to ask a few questions. I see several of you may have a, a few comments. Bring me in real quickly, Ryan. Um, You're in. Why is it so hard? Here's the first question. Why is it so hard to be devoted to Christian people? That's my first question. Why is it so hard to be devoted to, some of y'all would say church members. Now, I ain't talking about church members. I'm talking about Christians. Why do you find it so hard to, to be devoted to working with people, serving people? Why do you find that so hard? Anybody? I'm ready. Go ahead, Walker. Well, my opinion is, can you trust them or are they going to stab you in your back? And sometimes most of the people are jealous of what you're doing and what you got. And oh, so that's... They can smile in your face 
But as soon as you turn your back, they're talking about you on the phone or somewhere else. Brother Walker, that is a great statement. Brother Walker said one of the reasons why it's so hard to be devoted to people is because you trust them and they stab you. If you agree with that, let me see your hands or put it in the box. You, Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You trust them and then somehow they, they stab you. And, and Brother Walker, you are right. It, it is hard to be devoted to people who... You put your trust in them and you think you know them and you're working with them. And the next thing you know, they stab you in your back. We, we, and then we normally say that brings about a lot of church hurt, ruptured, ruptured friendships, and you've served them. Okay, someone else, a lady. Why is it so hard to be devoted to someone? Why is it so hard? Good morning. I mean, not good hey, morning. Sister Mia, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, I think one is because uh, my my mom and my grandma used to say it's, it's uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. And okay. what I mean by that is um, a lot of people, a lot of church people want to be in the forefront and don't want to learn and listen. Yeah. And so that kind of holds back. To, you know, I like it. Sister so Mia said that one of the reasons is that because there's a whole lot of chiefs and there's not a whole lot of people who want to be Indians. They don't want to be servants. They want to be in charge. But, but, but the secret to real leadership is serving. But you're right. When you just want to be out front, it makes it hard. One more, one more. Why is it so hard to be devoted and honor people? Anybody? Why is it so hard? Go right this, ahead. This brother gets because gifts. you you don't know what their motives are. Um, sometimes they can see your agenda, and they want to be a part of your agenda. And then all of a sudden, they want to institute their agenda into your agenda. Yeah, 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 brother Gibson, you spot on it, and 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 that's what I told. I was telling those guys yesterday, what's your motive? And and and, it, and it's bad that we have to sometimes be skeptical about people motives. But the reason why we're skeptical about people motives is just what Brother Walker said, because sometimes uh, we've trust people and we trusted them with our hearts. We've trusted them with power. We've trusted them with a lot. And then what they do is they, in some sense, let us down. But here's what Paul says. Paul says we still should be bloated, devoted to one another. And so, um, um, and only God can give us strength because here's, here's, here's the picture. Remember the illustration. Jesus was still devoted and he was not guilty. He was devoted to finishing God's will. He was devoted to forgiving us. He was devoted to dying on the cross for us and he was not guilty. And so when we think about the one another tonight, Paul says that um, we ought to honor one another and be devoted to one another. Now, here's a big one right here. Here's a big one right here. Uh, the next one is, notice what Paul says, don't judge one another. When he talk about the one another, he's talking about, he's talking about first honoring and being devoted, but then he says, and don't judge one another. Don't put a stumbling block in a brother's way. Now, I want y'all to think about this because there's a difference between speaking the truth to people, and I have that on there, than judging them. Because there's a lot of people will come back and say in the church, you can't judge me. No, I can't. Nobody can judge you. But we can speak the truth to one another. And what Paul was saying is that here, look, when you talk about judging, um, um, sometimes we only judge by what we see on the outside. Some of us judge because we don't like what we see in other people and what we don't like what we see in other people is what we don't like about ourselves. So when you talk about the whole one another, Paul says, look at here, love one another, be devoted to one another and loving one another, honor one another. Then he says, be devoted to one another. But then he said, look, don't judge. Look at, listen to this quote. Stop judging how far people still have to go. Instead, start celebrating how far they've come. Let me say that again. Stop judging how far people 
still have to go because all of us got a long way to go. We haven't made it yet. But he says, but instead, start celebrating how far they've come. And we have to sometimes watch out for judgmental. Sometimes when we judge people, it, we have to be careful that we're not showing one of our own weaknesses of insecurity. Insecurity. Now, be very clear. Be very clear. It's one thing, and I'll tell you about speaking the truth to people. And Lord, how we need to speak the truth. But we have to be careful when it comes to a judgmental attitude. Here's the next one. Here's the next one as we talk about the one another's. Um, let, me, let me just ask a question. Let me just ask a question on this judging. Are you a person who encourages or are you a person who judges? On a scale of one to seven, are you a person who do a lot of encouraging or are you one of those persons who do a lot of judging? Let me say this while, while we're on this. And, um, some of us judge other people more harshly than we judge some people. See, sometimes we let our friends and family slide. And people who we don't have a good feel for, we normally judge them more critical than we should be. We should be judging and telling the truth to our family members, our friends. We should be telling the truth to everybody. Or let me put it another way. Some people, are, some people give heavy criticism to folk that they don't have real relationship with. And folk they have a real relationship with, they let slide. So on a scale of one to 10, are you just overly critical to people that you don't have good relationships with or don't care too much for? Or, do, or is your judgment fair across the stage? Is it fair across the stage? Are you biased in how you judge people? Do you let certain people off? And then here's the last, here's another one, here's another one. Do you judge yourself as hard as you judge other people? Because anytime we start judging other people, we got to turn the mirror and also look at ourselves. Because if you're judging other people, and Paul says don't judge other people, guess what? Just know people are also judging you. So Paul said, we ought to not do that. And I love the quote. Put that quote back up, Ryan, uh, for us tonight. Then I'll move on and take some comments. Uh, it says again, stop judging how far people still have to go. Instead, start celebrating how far they come. And I've learned that when you celebrate how far they come, they get strength to go a little further. Sister Mia says, it's good to have some self-evaluation. And man, it ain't that important. Because, you, you know, it's amazing how we can tell everybody else what's wrong with them. And we don't look in the mirror and tell others. We don't look in the mirror and also judge ourselves as critical. All right, here's another one. Be hospitable to one another. Be hospitable to one another. Offer hospitality to one another. Now, this is very, this is very, very important. And I thank God for Emmanuel because Emmanuel has some very hospitable people very hospitable people. And when I think about a lot of you, even who are on tonight and who's not on, you guys do a great job of being hospitable to other folk. Those of you who have, helping those who don't have. Those of you who struggle and got through struggles, you help people who are going through it. And, and here's what I want us all to understand. That's one of the ways we know that we have the spirit of God. Put that quote up on hospitable. It says, biblical hospitality is an authentic welcoming and serving, especially toward those who can do nothing in return, who can't do nothing in return. That's what it should be. Biblical hospitality is an authentic welcoming and serving especially toward those who can't do nothing in return. We have to understand, y'all, 
everyone, everybody wow. can serve people who can do stuff for them in return. But what about the people who are not on your status, not on your level? How do you show them hospitality? Not looking for anything back. Listen, anybody can run with people who, who have stout class, a little clout, you know. But what about that person who don't? Actually, Jesus came to help those type of people. You know why? He said, they who are whole, they don't even need a physician. And when we think about the one another, people who come into our church, who listen to me closely, who are not driving nice cars, who are not dressed nice, who look like they came from a homeless shelter, we still have to show hospitality to them and be hospitable. Um, bring me in and I wanna raise a question. Why is hospitality so important? Why, why is showing hospitality so important? Anybody? I think hospitality is one of the ways that we draw people in. Um, I think about what it said, I think it's Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before man so that they may say your good works and glorify your father who's in heaven so it's a way of drawing people into the kingdom yeah and, and, and now let me ask you this let me ask another question uh and um 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 christian put in there and sometimes it's the other way around hey christian are you on to comment on that uh, statement in the chat box i'm looking at Oh, that was referring to when you were talking about how um, it's easier for us to, uh, well, the point you made before you, you got to this point about, mm -hmm. you know, we judge others that, we judge others that are not in our families or uh -huh. are not in our close circles. It's easier for us to judge others, but sometimes it's the other way around because it's like, your family looks at like you know i know you've been taught this way and uh -huh. you're still going out and doing xyz so uh -huh. sometimes you know that judgment can come harder towards a family member versus a non-family member because you know how you've been taught oh absolutely absolutely and and rightfully so because when people know what to do you expect them to do what they know that is a great point that's a great point um well taken um but uh Christian in the chat box. But why is it so hard sometimes, y'all, for us to show hospitality? I think it's because we don't know how to treat one another. You, you know? think it's you think it's because we just don't know how to treat one another? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and you know, and Sister Odom, and it could be too that hospitality hasn't been shown to us. But then also it could be some people are just mean. Um, 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 I, I often, I watch people and our first response should be to be hospitable. Ryan says something that's important. I want to grab it again. We draw people toward us when we're hospitable. But here's the thing about hospi hospitality. It's got to start in your private life. It's got to also start in your home because it's fake if that's all you do is go to the marketplace, the workplace, um, of, uh, get with your, your friends and, and you so hospitable, you so cool, you so down, you so sweet, and yet you don't, you're not that same way in private. See, Ryan is, is raving his hand. See, the, see the, the real problem is why it's so hard to be hospitable to people is because it's got to be a part of our DNA. And what some of us do, we choose when we're going to be hospitable. We choose certain groups we're going to be hospitable with. We choose certain people we want to be hospitable with. Painting a picture before them of a person who we're really not. But Paul says in the body of Christ, I see a lot of y'all shaking y'all head. Paul says in the body of Christ, we ought to be hospitable to one another. 
But the real, the real challenge is, is because if we're not genuinely hosp hospitable in our private lives, we're always frustrated, mean, grumble, um, 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 you know, in different swings. It's hard for you. Now you can do this. You can go out there and turn it on wherever you go, but sooner or later, the real you gonna show up. And, and we're living in a world, watch this, the opposite of hospitality is hostility. It's hostility. We're living in a very hostile world. You look at it. I mean, what happens is that we fake at it in so many ways, trying to be hospitable, but the hostility sooner or later comes out of us. Paul says in the body of Christ, we should be hospitable to one another and not hostile. And so uh, as we think through that tonight, make sure when you meet people, then, you know, and now he's talking about how you ought to treat the body of Christ. When you, when you come into the body of Christ, I don't handle people roughly. Don't handle your brothers and sisters hostile. And the reason why we have so much confrontations, and this, you let me tell y'all something, this ain't just at church. This shows up in the marketplace. It shows up in the workplace. See, everything we need to understand is that you are a product of your environment. And that environment changes when you come in, what you bring to it. And some people just bring tension. They bring tension everywhere. They bring that, host that hostile spirit. Paul says for the body of Christ, God forbid, he said, we should be hospitable to one another and showing genuinely and true hospitality to people. Let's not get so caught up in a, in a cold world because the world is cold. Mm -hmm. The world is cold. And, you know, I've had people tell me, well, I'm glad it's you because I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be. The, you know why? Because you don't have that spirit. But when you're a hospital, and trying to reach people. Don't let nobody criticize you for genuine, I didn't say be a nut. I didn't say be a fool, but for genuine hospitality of trying to reach people. All right, here's another one. Here's a biggie right here. Faster, I think Go right so ahead. Go right here. Go right here. Question too. Uh, uh, can I say something real quick? Go right here. You know, it, sometimes hospitality takes practice and the, the, the thing that uh, I miss that we don't do anymore is share the joy moment in, mm -hmm. in service because, you know, it, it, it causes you to greet one another That's with a good. smile. And, and, good. Sometimes, and sometimes when you when you having a, a down moment, a, a person smile towards you, it change your whole perspective and your whole attitude. So, yeah. you know, it yeah. takes practice sometimes. Yeah, and see, uh, you're spot on it. See, the reason for the share of the joy moment at church, it wasn't just to carry out a song loan. It's to be, it's to, it's to be hospitable to people, hospitable to pe uh, people who are struggling, people who are going through. Some people hadn't been touched or smiled at all week long. Some people hadn't had a hug all week long. So when we get up and sing, and, and we were doing it before a pandemic, sharing the joy, um, I was very intentional about that. Because let's just face it, this is a lonely world. Yeah. And I love what you said, Brother Gibson. Uh, we have to be taught that. And it has to be a practice in our DNA. And when you get out there in the real world, you begin to discover how messed up people really are. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what positions they have, how much uh, power they have. I don't care how much money and clout they have. You begin to see how messed up they really, really are. So thank you for that. Ryan, you said something. I'm sorry. Pick that back up. Yeah, Sister Courtney has her hand raised for a comment. Go ahead, Sister Courtney. I just want to say, Pastor Webster, I just want to say thank you. You drop, you dropping nuggets tonight. You dropping powerful dropping nuggets. nuggets tonight. You dropping okay. nuggets. That's the first thing. Second thing is... Uh, hospitality is is needed in this world today we have to learn to meet people where they are where yes. they're at in their life yeah. yes and we we don't meet people where they're at we just look at them and we turn our heads away we have to meet them where they're at and then walk along with them for humility yeah. so yeah i, I just yeah. want to share that to you 
Well, I'm glad I'm dropping dimes, meeting them where they at, meeting them where they at. And again, I tell you guys, I tell you guys, the only power for the, the only power to live this life is the Christian power that comes from the word of God. You can, you can put your, you can put your trust in everything else, but you're going to find out if you don't have the biblical foundation, you're going to act like them. You're going to act like them. Either you will change them or they will change you. And you got to have the power of the Holy Spirit. All right. Hand, Linda, uh, um, Linda wants to say something. Go ahead, Sister Linda. I go right ahead. Say, I want to say that hospitality, uh, I was taught hosp hospitality from my mom and dad. Uh -huh. so, and, and I know sometimes I find myself, because I'm hospitable to people, sometimes I'm criticized as to why are you always so nice to people? Uh -huh. you know? So you can get it from either end. Some people wonder why you're that way. And but if that's the way you've been taught, uh -huh. then that's what I carry on through my life is because I learned to encourage people because encouraging people help encourage me. Yeah, to be I like that. I, yeah, I like that, Sister Linda, Linda, uh, because in, in many ways and we're going to just have wrap it up for um, discussion um, in, in, a, in many ways um, when you think about it. People will criticize you, but I'm going to tell you something. It takes more power to be devoted, to honor, not to judge, and to be hospitable. It takes more power to do that than to be, watch this, the opposite of, of, of being devoted is being unfaithful. I tell people this all the time. Don't, don't give me that. Anybody can be unfaithful. But it takes power to be devoted. All right? Uh, the opposite of honor, when Paul says we should honor one another, is to dishonor. And I've never seen a world where people want to, I've, I've seen people dishonor and disrespect their parents who they know that is taking care of them, been there for them, or, or a husband dishonoring his wife when he knows or disrespecting her, or vice versa, a wife turns and disrespects her husband. The opposite, let me tell you something, you are more of a woman or a man when you are committed to trying to uh, respect be devoted, then to do the opposite of, of trying to show people. Because listen, in, in this Christian life, any of us can disrespect one another. That's what the world does. The world will cuss you out. But it takes the fruit of the spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit to, 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 to be devoted in love, to honor one another. Watch this, not to judge, and to be hospitable, and to be hospitable. Ryan, and go back last week, and I'll close with this one, and we'll have a few comments, and we'll be out for the evening. How about the one that says, and speak the truth to one another? That was last week's outline, speaking the truth to one another. Now, now you know, I'm going to tell you all why this one is so big. I'm going to tell you all this, uh, and this is really big. We are, when the Bible tells us to speak the truth to one another, and then we're done after this brief discussion and we're done. Um, the world is suffering and the church is suffering. First of all, because we're not being hospitable. We got to show genuine love. We have to be careful of judging. We have to honor one another. But let me tell you another reason why we're suffering. It's because we can't just love and don't tell the truth. We just can't love people and then don't be truthful to them. See, people want you, we live in a world, whether it's church, whether it's family members, whether it's um, uh, coworkers, you can't love nobody and see them go off a cliff and don't tell them the truth. Notice what Paul says to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 4.25, therefore, Laying aside all falsehoods. 
Now notice what he says, and this will preach on a Sunday morning, but I'm not going to, uh, I'll just talk about it tonight. In other words, he says, lay aside all lies, all falsehoods. In, in other words, jot this down. He said, stop being fake. Stop being fake. He said, lay aside all falsehoods and speak true to each one of you with his neighbor. Watch this. For we are members of one another. Now, now he's talking to the body of Christ. He said, first of all, please stop being fake. Stop pretending to be somebody you're not. If you're a Christian, be a Christian. And then he says, stop telling lies. In other words, y'all, we live in a world that really lied to ourselves. But how many of you know, lie can't outrun truth. Sooner or later, you're going to have to face the truth. Sooner or later, you're going to have to face it. He says, so what we should do is speak the truth one to another. And by the way, when you speak the truth one to another, do it in love. Do it in love. Don't be so quick to cut people up. And you, because let me say this to you. If you don't speak the truth in love, even though you tell the truth, guess what? Sometimes it's not going to be received. And, and let me say this. You ought to love the, your church members enough. And you ought to love your family members enough to tell them the truth. Now, whether they receive it, guess what? That's on them. That's on them. But guess what? You should never be the person who always talk about what you're going to say and what you're going to, and you never say anything. We, Paul says to the Christian, the body of Christ, let me tell you something. If, if, if members would, listen to this, because he says we're members one to another. If members would tell one another the truth, then pastor wouldn't have to. Let me go a little further. If family members would tell one another the truth, people in the church wouldn't have to. But then just in case, and we'll wrap it up for the evening for questions, comments, and takeaway. I want everybody to write a takeaway down. Just in case you miss, you miss, the pew miss it, the family member miss it. Listen, we have a mandate to speak the truth. Now, um, as I conclude, here's the gems we talked about tonight. Very simple. First of all, ask yourself a question. How devoted am I to loving God, my neighbors, my family? And then I think, ask yourself, what is it that I'm devoted to that's taken away my love for God, his work, his people, his family? Secondly, ask yourself the question, who am I honoring and who am I dishonoring? Now, you know, it says give honor. We always say that, that's our Bible. We say the term, give honor to whom honor is due. Normally we hear that at a pastor's appreciation and we should give honor. But who am I honoring and who am I disrespecting? Because sometimes we honor people who really don't deserve honor, honor. They deserve correcting. So how am I honoring or dishonoring? Here's the third one. Who am I judging or who's judging me? Who am I judging? Brother Walker, Keith Walker, or who's judging me? Who am I judging or who's judging me? Who am I judging or who's judging me? And lastly, how am I showing hospitality? I want you to um, um, find a way this month to be hospitable, to show hospitality. 
you know, we, we'll, we'll get back to encouraging and I'm going to talk about stimulating the one another's good work Sunday. All right, takeaways, Brother Walker. Yeah, you know, the uh, hospitality and, and treating people fair, that's why we need the right people at the church door when they're coming in on Sundays. Okay. <laughs> or I guess in the hospitality committee uh, showing love. Yeah, uh, Brother Walker, I like that. And we got a great group at the church door. When you walk in and see Sister Truesdale smile and see Sister Oscar and Janice out there, they're always smiling. And uh, 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 that whole hospitality and, and greeters committee, you know, man, uh, with hospitality, it's just inviting. It's, it's inviting. It's, it's inviting. You, with hospitality, you don't even have to say a word. That's right. People, and listen to this. People want to do. It makes you feel welcome. Yeah, Sister. Feel, why, why does it make you feel welcome, Sister Donna? You just feel the love, the spirits in you. When you go somewhere, like yeah. when you walk in a church and you got church members. Yeah. When they come to you and stuff, the smile and stuff, you just know it's real, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In it's other a words, feeling of love and, and it's, it's, it's something. It's something. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. And it has to come from an from and your it has heart. To, yeah, it has to come from a genuine heart. Most people, they give off vibes. Yeah. And we're a vibe generation. We, we feel in vibes. Some vibes are good, some vibes are bad. Dying people are connecting vibes, but you don't right. even know what heart is coming from. Right, right. I love what you said. What heart is it coming from? And for the church, it ought to come from a heart that is heart. anchored Amen. and grounded in the word of God. That's where it starts at. Thank you for that, um, Sister Donna. And, and quite frankly, quite frankly, and this is why, guys, and, and I love this one another month. Let, never forget, we bring the church what's been in our heart all week. Amen. Amen. We get time out, we go into worship on Sunday, but we bring in there half of the stuff that's been in our hearts. This is why it's so hard. We bring in the church all of this clutter and the things that we have in our heart all week. That's why Jesus says, you got to love me first That's right. with all your heart, That's right. all your soul, all your mind. And then listen to what he said, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And then you can love your church members. And the reason why I'm loving this lesson tonight, and I thank you, Sister Courtney, to say we're dropping nuggets, is because we have to do, when we get to these one another's, it's not just looking at, we can't even treat people right if we ain't together ourselves. Amen. You gotta love yourself. Yeah. yeah. All right. Someone else, take away for tonight. Thank you, Sister Donna. And we'll be done. Pastor, I'd like to ask the question. You, you said speaking the truth, and we talked about judgment. And it seems like sometimes as Christians, when we are speaking the truth, it's considered judging. How do we deal with that? That's a great question. Sister Rakia said um, um, I, the statement that I made about speaking the truth and, and, and I talked about judging. And sometimes when we speak the truth, it comes over as judgment, right? I'll tell you how you deal with it. When you know that your motive is not to judge and you're genuinely speaking the truth, you can't change how people receive it. Because here's the real, here's the real, here's the real truth about the matter. Sister um, Rakia, most people don't want you to speak the truth to them. So that's why they tell you, you can't judge me. Or you can't tell me anything. They don't want you to speak the truth to them. Because you know why? Truth hurts. And let's, let's, let's face it. And all of us done been there. Amen. We've all have been there where we do not want to hear it. But here's the thing I like about it. If you have a relationship with God, God going to convict you. Even though you try to say somebody's judging me, then the Holy Spirit turns around and he convicts you. All right. Thank you for that. That's a great uh, question. Someone else. Okay. Walker, you didn't have five takeaways. Go ahead, Walker. That's a fall. <laughs> I'm going to get a takeaway from Sister Minnie, and I'm going to get one from Sister. I was just thinking about the hospitality. <laughs> 
And, I, and I'm gonna throw Travis in here too, but we can't, you cannot run a business and people walking in or you dealing with people and you don't have the hospitality. Travis can uh, uh, relate to that. You have to have that greeting and that uh -huh. smile when yeah. you're walking in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Because watch right, this. Travis? Yeah. I, we don't want to spend our money with hostile people. <laughs> Travis, you want to comment on that? It's yeah, I'll, I'll comment on it. You do have to be hospitable. And I mean, I hate to say this, but sometimes it's, it's kind of like you have to put on, you know what I'm saying? Not all the time, but sometimes you get some people that come in there and they just don't have the right spirit on them when, when, when they yeah. come in the door. Yeah, yeah. So, or either they're complaining about something that's small, but you still have to try your best to, 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 to make them feel comfortable. Yeah, I get it. So, I get and it. Then, and then, then I, I go back to my office to talk about it. And I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, you know. But uh, you, you know, and I thought about that when 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 this scripture came up is be hospitable, you know, without uh, it says uh -huh. without grump, you know. So I something I'm gonna have to work on. Uh -huh. But you know, like he said, we do have to be hospitable because they're not gonna spend no money on on us if they don't feel comfortable. Well, and listen to this, Travis. You you're right, but 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 I I feel you. Because okay. Sometimes there's just hostile customers. There's just hostile customers. Even I don't care how hospitable you are. And let me say it: there's sometimes it's just hostile church members. Yeah. And a lot of times that's because of what we bring. Listen to this: it's because it's what we bring from our private lives and we bring from our homes. And so, and so what happens is, what happens is we have to pray each day that God gives us a spirit of hospi uh, hospitality. And when they make us mad, Travis, instead of going in the office and talking about them, ask God to give you grace to just pray for them. And I know that, and I know that can be tough. I know that can be tough because it's our human nature, not just to go in the office and talk about them. It's our human nature to let them have it. And I'm and I'm I'm speaking frankly. I'm a pastor, but I met a lot of hostile people that's a part of the church, and they don't demonstrate mm -hmm. a spirit of hospitality. You can hear it in the conversation. I tell them when they ask, them, "Don't talk to nobody hostile." I tell all the leaders this: talk to people with a spirit of love. And you know why I tell them that? Because God has put me there as the under shepherd of that church. Whether you're a greeting, whether you're an usher, whether you're answering the phones every day, talk to people with genuine hospitality. You know, and don't forget that they're God's people. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes do some of them deserve it? No, but the Bible says we still should do it. All right. Okay. Um, I got one passion. Okay. On 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 judgment, uh, that commentary that you made about, you know, worrying about how far a person needs to come from, and you need to celebrate how far a person has come from. Yeah. Uh, I think you know, and it and it and it drew me to, to Acts, um, uh, chapter fifteen, uh, verses uh, thirty seven. Through 40 during the time period that, that Paul and Barnabas had a disagreement about John. Uh -huh. you uh -huh. know, and, and Paul was being judgmental because of Mark's desertion. But you know, it, it came to the point that he was so judgmental that they had a disagreement, they separated. Yep. So it, you know, it just it talks about the growth and speaks on the growth that one saw the growth of a person and the other one saw, no, no, this, this person, he actually deserted it and he failed it. So we got to uh -huh. be careful. We got to be careful on that judgment. Because yeah, it, it, it caused separation. It caused separation. Yeah, it causes separation, but I thank God that they were matured. Paul, uh, John Mark, and uh, Barnabas, they all was able to get through that, even though they separated for a moment. Amen. At the end, they got back together. Amen. Brother Oscar, what's your takeaway as we get ready to wrap it up tonight? Yes, Pastor. Uh, let me see. Is it on mute? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well. Uh huh. Yes. One of my takeaways is, uh, you know, you can't tell another person to take the plank from his eyes 
until you fully took the planks from your eyes. You go to a person trying to judge him and tell him something, and you still got that plank in your eyes. So my takeaway is don't tell a person to take the plank from his eyes until you take it from yours. That's very good. Brother mm -hmm. Oscar says that in judging people, be careful because you have a big old log in your eye. Don't try to move the log out of your uh, somebody else's eye and you got the big old log in your eye. Very good, mm -hmm. Brother Oscar. All mm -hmm. right, Sister Minnie, and then we're done. Um, I have several takeaways, but but the one that 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 I find um, intriguing to me is when you said that um, love is not what you give, uh, how much you can give is how much you can take. Yeah, yeah. And, and that yeah. was something good for me. And, and on other things, I mean, I like people, if I ask you a question, I don't want you to flip flop around. I want you to tell me the truth. Because if you ask me the question, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't want to know the truth, don't ask mm -hmm. me. Don't ask me. Yeah. But I want to be honest. And, and, and I try to be hospitable. And I try to treat people the way I want to be treated. But yeah. sometimes that doesn't happen. But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's a biggie, sister. Many, if you want to tweet something out, love is not how much you can give. Mm -mm. It's how much you can take. How much you can take. And so many times we 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 boast about, well, I ain't got to take this. No, you yeah. don't. No, you don't. You don't have to take it. But at the same time, Jesus didn't have to take it either. He sure didn't. And I know some stuff say, well, I ain't Jesus. But <laughs> guess what? He's our model. All right. Well, you've been a good crowd tonight. Anybody else, Ryan? Any other comments in the box before we we um, get finished for tonight? Yeah, Brother Jeff said he needed to honor God first. Jeff said what? Yeah. Brother Jeff said he needed to honor God first, self second, and others thirdly. Yes. Um, it matters how you approach a person. That's from Sister Mims. Uh, the other ones you got. Yeah. Okay. Brother Jeff, thank you for that. It, uh, honor God first. And I think, guys... As tough thing, as tough as things are right now, we all got to get back to the point whereby we honor God first. Oh, if we don't honor God first, guess what? You can forget it. You come self-absorbed, self-centered. Um, uh, everything begins to be about you. A good way to stay on track, first of all, honor God in your vertical relationship. And when you honor God in your vertical relationship, guess what? When you feel like giving up horizontally, God gives you the supernatural grace to keep going. And I know the ball game is coming on tonight, so I'm going to, uh, as Brother Ralph would say, knock it off right here. How many of you were blessed tonight? Share this lesson with somebody else. Give somebody a big group hug, and let's pray. Father, thank you for our time together tonight to discuss and share one another. Thank you for the hands that are up, that has been blessed. And we pray, oh dear God, that you will continuously keep your hands on your people. Thank you, Father, that um, your word is challenging. And Lord, oh, how we need challenging during these difficult times. Oh, how we need, oh dear God, to not stray, but to stay focused. And God, we ask you, even right now, to help us to love you with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds. And let our Christianity be genuine. Let it be genuine, Lord, in our walk. Let it be genuine in our private lives. Let it be genuine, oh dear God, um, in our personal life. Let it be genuine, oh dear God, in our public and our professional lives. Help us when we talk about one another, oh dear God, to understand that knowing what to do we must ask you for strength to do what we know. I pray for Sister Golder tonight that you will be with her and that you will strengthen her, oh dear God, as uh, she's in the hospital, gives us in the cold what she needs even now. And I pray for so many that are going through uh, sickness, grief, hurting, loneliness, depression. Lord, meet their needs tonight. And how we thank you, oh dear God, that you, oh God, 
who hear and answer our prayers. Bless our young people, bless them and strengthen them as they continuously strive to grow. Bless our VBS, bless our week of dealing uh, boot camp with men. Lord, bless our one another month and then bless, oh dear God, on Sunday as we spend a little time just uh, worshiping in the park. Father, we thank you that your word is so powerful that it, it, it undresses us, but then it dresses us. And we pray now that you would dismiss us, oh dear God, in Jesus' name, amen.